We're continuing our discussion on good mental health with a solutions-focused life coach and behavior expert out of Woodstock, Vermont, Dr. Neil Marinello. I'm your host, Matt Kelly. We're glad to have your company. We'd appreciate it too if you like this video to give it a thumbs up or even to subscribe. We're uh, continuing our discussion and our topic today is uh, one that I like to think of as actually a, a pure nihilism. I've heard it for a number of years, having been a, uh, uh, a client of uh, Dr. Neal's. Um, so for me, it's old hat, but even as I wrap my mind around it, it still blows my mind even today. Our topic is um, all human systems are flawed. And Neil, of course, um, the original thought here was that all systems are flawed. We've amended it a little bit to uh, give a caveat here that all human systems are flawed. And like I say, when I think about this, you know, I, I can get down because when you start examining it, I mean, this, this is really deep and profound and, and it affects every facet of everyday life for every human on this planet. Uh, yeah, I think that um, obviously the area of my specialty is uh, is mental health and mental illness. At the same time, um, uh, it was through exploring that that I came to this conclusion uh, that just just about all systems are flawed, whether it's all human systems or all systems. Uh, my brother, uh, uh, who was a computer expert, uh, talked about the possibility that there are computer systems that are not flawed. Mm. I suppose if you uh, if you take them out of context, that's probably true. But when you look at the entire system, it's uh, it's definitely the case. But uh, but I, I'd say the best way to, to explore this is uh, pick a system, right. uh, and, uh, and I'll be happy to explain my associations with it and the ways in which it's flawed. Well, and and to that end, I mean, you can pick any system, whether it be the judicial system, the healthcare system, our DMV, uh, any any system that well, we live by. Why don't you just pick one? You want to start with judicial? <laughs> yeah, go to that. Yeah. yeah. At one point, uh, I probably testified on more cases than uh, uh, any other shrink in Vermont. Uh, it helps to have had uh, two parents that were lawyers and two kids that are lawyers. Mm -hmm. So I know how lawyers think, and that uh, especially equips me to deal with things like cross-examination, which is really nothing but a sword fight. Uh, but the simple reality is that, uh, uh, that uh, the judicial system is set up based on laws, and laws are good, but the judicial system also is based on, uh, on case law. And when you take any one case, uh, you'll find that it doesn't apply to any other case. Uh, in fact, when they cite uh, laws, they wind up citing one case to, to make a case for another case. Uh, the other factor, of course, is that uh, when it comes to laws, laws are, are passed by uh, uh, legislatures, and legislatures are being influenced by uh, uh, lobbyists and lobbyists have specific uh, uh, goals in mind and operate with a single, uh, a single purpose. Uh, that is not necessarily what is best for the United States of America or any other country. Uh, but uh, uh, are there flaws in the system? You don't have to look back more than six months to see the flaws in the, in the American system. Uh, well, and, and you know what comes to mind for me here are unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. I mean, the law can have, you know, the purest of intention, yet uh, unintended consequences, uh, thereby prove your rule that, you know, all human systems are flawed. And even if you were to take it uh, to that extreme of, say, medication, mm -hmm. right, it all has unintended side effects that you don't want. Um, and that is an example that the system is flawed. If I'm, you know, going that, oh, I need to have my eyelashes longer, which there's a, you know, cosmetic product out there for that, you have to take into mind all the potential side effects of using it, um, which could be even worse than, than the ailment you're trying to cure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but going uh, a step further, uh, Beyond that, what you're talking about when you're talking about medication is often 
uh, the drug companies. And uh, drug, drug companies are basically corporations who exist for the benefit of the shareholders. And uh, uh, we have, don't have to go back very far to realize that some of those drug companies wound up uh, uh, using their medications uh, uh, without consideration of the implications. Uh, uh, basically, um, uh, many drug companies have wound up coming up with millions, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to pay back for the fact that uh, uh, they were pushing uh, drugs as strong or stronger than heroin uh, on the uh, uh, average person by convincing doctors that this was the right way to go. Uh, it gets worse than that. The simple reality is that uh, uh, there are many things that I disagree with Bernie Sanders on, but I have to say that he's pretty much on the nose when it comes to drug companies and health care. Mm -hmm. You know, as we examine the question again, all human systems are flawed. It can be pretty disheartening when, when you kind of really look at it. And so the only way that I can uh, try to take solace or strength from it is to be well armed with that knowledge so that I am not surprised or upset if the system or uh, whatever has been created by a human uh, ends up breaking down. Uh, that's exactly right, Matt. Uh, and here's where uh, science and belief uh, come into conflict. When someone believes something to be true and acts as if it were true, uh, and there's no uh, scientific basis for it, or there's very slight scientific basis for it, uh, they're indulging in a possible delusion. Uh, a fixed false belief. The difficulty with that is that if you act as if that's the same as science, which is a method of disproof, uh, then you run into enormous problems. Uh, the, the simple uh, fact is that, uh, that facts are facts and they exist and they can be backed up or disproved uh, based on what the data is that you have. The, uh, the problem is that beliefs come in conflict with facts and when that happens, uh, some people operate as if their beliefs were facts. Uh, that's a problem, and it is probably the single biggest problem uh, with any kind of system that uh, uh, that has human elements. Uh, people who, uh, and, and it's not just a problem, it's even a problem for scientists, you know. Uh, much of the research done on drugs is done by, uh, uh, by scientists who are working for drug companies. Mm. Uh, the mechanisms for confirming whether drugs are valid or invalid or are going to be used or going to make the, the physician's desk reference uh, has to do with, uh, with comparing them to placebos without taking into account the uh, incredible power of placebos. Uh, so uh, the understanding the flaws of any system arms you to be able to make a decision about what is really best for you. Uh, I specialized, I think, in, in studying these systems and in telling my clients uh, as much of the truth as I can come up with, including when I don't know the, the facts and where they can go to get it. Uh, it's sometimes the internet, often it's not. Some of the internet uh, uh, sources are, uh, uh, are nothing more than, um, uh, than an attempt to uh, uh, to sell things to people uh, uh, using uh, facts in quotes. I mean, it happened to me recently. Uh, I was in a situation where uh, uh, I was uh, uh, received an email that said that uh, uh, that Shark Tank, which is a show that I've seen a few times on TV, uh, had recommended and totally backed a particular medication for losing weight. Uh, and as you know, weight has been a big issue for me over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read the, the article, I went ahead and, uh, 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 and ordered the stuff and uh, then found out that uh, Shark Tank never mentioned this, had nothing to do with it. Uh, and so I engaged my system, which was the, uh, the particular uh, uh, credit card that I was using. I uh, let them know that I had been uh, bilked uh, and they checked it out and came back to me and said, uh, no, uh, this, this is, uh, they didn't say the system, uh, they didn't say that they, actually Shark Tank had proved it, but what they did say was uh, the way in which it was handled was totally acceptable. And I wind up taking the hit 
uh, uh, with the full awareness that I have been doped. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no better way to learn than uh, getting conned by somebody. Well, and that, you know, uh, is uh, a flaw of the internet, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, and, uh, and it's also a flaw of the, uh, uh, of the email system, and it's also a flaw of the uh, credit card system, which no. I was using. In fact, I made my main credit card a different one after that ah. with a company that is more customer friendly. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one thing that, you know, was coming up to mind here for me is, you know, this also sort of serves as a, as a guidepost for me, and I would hope for those who are, are watching as well, in the pursuit of perfection, um, which, you know, can be a neuroses as well. Um, but knowing that all human systems are flawed, anything that a human creates, there's going to be a flaw. So the pursuit of perfection really is uh, sort of the Mobius strip, as you and I have talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, in yeah, yeah. And, uh, and something of a, uh, uh, a time-related problem. In other words, uh, what was perfect 20 years ago or 30 years ago is not perfect now and will not mm -hmm. be perfect 10 or 20 years from now. Uh, but an, an example of, uh, of how systems are flawed, uh, you don't have to go very far. Uh, obviously, I'm familiar with the mental illness system. Uh, what it comes down to, though, is that uh, uh, in the early DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manuals of Mental Disorders, uh, there was a disease called involutional melancholia. Now, involutional melancholia sure sounds like a serious disease. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, involutional refers to menopause. Melancholia clearly refers to depression. Uh, involutional melancholia was a disease which uh, uh, existed in one of the early DSMs, but it was basically a setup for uh, rich men who were married to their first wives to get rid of their first wives and to uh, uh, marry their trophy wives. Huh. What they had to do was uh, have their, uh, their wife diagnosed with involutional melancholia, institutionalized, and uh, then they could get divorced and marry uh, uh, a younger woman. Uh, involutional melancholia no longer exists in DSM. I wonder why. Mm, yeah, yeah. The other thing that was coming up here was uh, for me anyways, was the, uh, again, the fact that I need to be forearmed that any system I look at uh, is going to have a flaw. And, and to back that up to its source, all humans are flawed. I'm flawed. Um, and me too. <laughs> and, and so anything that I were to create or even you were to create as much as we would try for its perfection mm -hmm. or to be free of flaws, there's going to be flaws in it because that's the human condition it seems like, you know? Well, now we go back to everyone's doing their best. Ah. And it is true that uh, you're doing your best, I'm doing my best. Uh, perfection to me is uh, uh, a, a false goal. I'm trying to do better now than I did a month ago, and I hope I'll be better a month from now than I am now. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, what happens when you get to perfection? And is perfection uh, for you, perfection for me? You know, uh, uh, concept of heaven and hell are good examples there. You know, what's heaven for one person uh, uh, is not going to be heaven for another person, and what's hell for one person is not going to be hell for another person. Mm. So you have to look at it from the individual perspective. And knowing my flaws, uh, which I uh, have spent quite a bit of time studying, is something which helps me to figure out what's right for me at this moment. And that goes back to one of our other topics that we all live in our own reality. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And uh, uh, the reality that I live in is one where the goal is to understand reality, understand what is real. Not just what is real for me, but what is real for the person I'm talking to or the system I'm dealing with. Uh, when you talk about human systems, you're talking about families, you're talking about uh, uh, communication within families, and you have all kinds of, of ways in which those systems can get screwed up. Yeah. Uh, if you step on my toe, uh, uh, 
I go, ouch, it hurts. Uh, and the pain goes away in a very short period of time. Unless I decide that Matt stepped on Neil's toe on purpose. Mm. If I decide you stepped on my toe on purpose, then we have a, a potential feud that can be going on hundreds of years from now. You remember back in 2021 when uh, Matt Kelly stepped on Neil Marinello's toe on purpose? That's why Matt's descendants and Neil's descendants have had a feud for the last several hundred years. Mm. It's all in the attribution that you give to the motivation of what's happening, and that's a common flaw that gets made in all human systems or family systems or communication systems. Mm. Uh, it's all, again, and we talked about this on this uh, podcast series, it's all in your response again. Mm -hmm. And your perception of the intention. Uh, I have found over the years that to assume that people's intentions are good uh, usually works a lot better than to assume that they are uh, crazy or evil, even though um, it, they may be crazy or evil. It doesn't much matter. What matters is that when you assume they're good, uh, the person has to say, oh, no, I, wait a minute, I'm crazy, I'm evil. Uh, that's not a correction many people make. Mm. So if you assume a person's intentions are good, it's possible to go from there in a direction that helps them to be better. Wow. We're speaking with Dr. Neil Marinello, continuing our uh, podcast series on good mental health as we examine his tweets. Our topic for today's discussion is all human systems are flawed. You know, if we take that human out, that caveat out for a bit. To me, I would say then that that is not necessarily an accurate act, uh, euphemism, only because to me, it seems that nature is perfect, even in its imperfection, if you will. And so I would say that that word human really has to be uh, in this theorem that all human systems are flawed. Oh, you make a good point there. Uh, I, uh... You know, I think that uh, George Carlin had a very good point about nature versus uh, uh, human beings. And he said, there's nothing wrong with the earth. Uh, the earth will be here long after we're gone. And that's true, you know, uh, regarding uh, climate change or whatnot. Maybe it's just humans that are, you know, fooling with that very small uh, habit ha habitation zone for the human species. Maybe humans are the flaw. Ah, there it is. That's great. Well, uh, I have to tell you, I'm thoroughly enjoying this topic. It, it is, as I refer to, one of the uh, nihilisms that I like to uh, refer to as sort of uh, one of the top 10 basic concepts that uh, describe you and your philosophy as you share it outward. Um, and for me, I can say that I honestly benefit from it. Again, it's not something that's uh, in the forefront of my mind, but it probably should be more, and it would probably help me better to cope with uh, the challenges of living in a flawed system. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't matter what system you look at, you look at whether it's capitalism or socialism or any other social construct, whether it's religion, uh, uh, they all have flaws in them. Uh, uh, sometimes the best way to, uh, to look at a system is to start with, the, with money. Mm. And to what extent are systems set up to produce money uh, rather than to produce what's best for the people that are being served? Mm. Uh, we, uh, uh, we talked before about the idea that, that any, uh, any group of people, whether they be uh, uh, lawyers or uh, psychologists or psychiatrists or medical doctors or, or any, any other group of people, uh, the first rule is not really written down, which is protect the other people in the group, uh, when the first rule should be protect the people who you are serving. Uh, it's, uh, and, and often uh, the financial benefit uh, is the one which can be looked at as the flaw. Uh, to what extent is this system uh, out for get making money rather than uh, serving customers? Mm -hmm. Wow. All human systems are flawed. Again, when I think about it, I, I'm, it brings me back to something that you just said, which was um, social constructs. And in a sense, 
you know, it could be a printing press, let's say, which is actually a physical um, construct versus a social construct like uh, our justice system. And I think we see this concept certainly more in our social uh, uh, constructs than in our physical constructs, but this, it transcends both. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, uh, and if you look at the printing press or at, uh, at you know, any, even something that's that tangible, uh, and you look into the background, you often find that the background uh, shows that the person who invented the particular object is not the one who's getting the benefit of it. Uh, often not even the one that, uh, that is credited. Uh, and uh, uh, everybody kind of agrees that uh, Thomas Edison was a great inventor. Uh, those who have looked into it in detail find that a lot of his inventions were done by somebody else. Right, right. Uh, Tesla uh, uh, being an example. And yet, you know, it sort of goes back to, again, what you just talked about. Um, and that was about the need for profit, uh, mm -hmm. certainly in this physical co construct, if you will, which was the electric grid and uh, the invention of electricity. And um, But the profit was at uh, his motives where I don't think Nikola Tesla was thinking that. He was thinking much further far ahead and not using that pedantic viewpoint and, and thinking of how could humanity have benefited. And maybe that was his flaw. Well, nobody, a starting point, and I'm not sure this is uh, uh, in one of my tweets or not, but a starting point is that nobody can predict the future. Mm. So whatever it is that you come up with, uh, whatever the invention is, whatever the concept is, whatever the social construct is, you know, an argument can be made that God is a social construct. Right. <laughs> uh, there are probably more people that have been killed in the name of God than any, uh, for any other reason. And yet uh, uh, the truth is that if you really look at it carefully, everyone has a different concept of God. Mm -hmm. uh, the construct, the social construct is, is served by various religions and, uh, and various individual perceptions. Uh, but uh, uh, deciding, okay, I'm gonna buy the social construct that the Catholics have over the social construct that the Protestants have or this, over the social construct that, uh, uh, that uh, the Jews have or whatever, they're all, uh, all constructs which come out of interactions among uh, groups of people in which uh, if you actually take them one at a time and you say, okay, describe exactly what God is to you, you will find no two are alike. Mm. And, and, you know, as I apply this to our current paradigm, if you will, in that, you know, people see, um, institutional racism or uh, uh, things like that. It's how can you not see it in a sense? How can it not be there if it is a human created system because all human systems are flawed? And it feels to me that these people who are complaining about uh, you know, institutional oppression or, or whatnot, they're looking for perfection. Mm -hmm. um, and like it or not, the system that we live in here in the United States seems to have been one of the best yet mm -hmm. uh, that's been created. Um, well, that's a very good point, you know, and uh, uh, when I was studying uh, uh, testing, which is something that psychologists learn, uh, um, it was very uh, uh, disturbing to me to understand that all tests have enormous flaws built into them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, you know, IQ tests are a good example. You know, it was very early determined that uh, IQ tests discriminated against uh, uh, African American people. Uh, what uh, what you have to take into account, though, is the fact that, uh, that there are uh, errors in every system and understanding those errors and using those errors to, to figure out how can you uh, actually use it to help people 
the concept of diagnosis, for example, is an extremely interesting one. Uh, uh, in the uh, 50s and 60s, uh, psychologists uh, were quite different from psychiatrists. Uh, the, the medical profession basically took over the concept of, uh, uh, of mental illness, and they uh, required it to required any uh, emotional illness to be called a disease. Wow. Uh, there's no blood test for schizophrenia. There's no way you can tell whether someone has uh, a passive aggressive personality disorder, which probably doesn't exist anymore because uh, whoever the person was who, who insisted that be in the DSM may have died and be replaced by another person who was interested in paranoid personality disorder. When you look at the systems and how they change over time, what you wind up realizing is that that uh, it's it's all a matter of social construct. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, the idea that the way a person thinks uh, has to be, in some level, uh, uh, cl called a disease, means that we are all diseased. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe disease should be thought of as a hyphenated word, uh, dis-ease. Right. You're not comfortable, uh, uh, and you're so uncomfortable that you wind up doing things that bring you to a shrink or that bring you uh, to uh, somebody who's uh, uh, to the attention of somebody who uh, uh, is uh, one of the enforcers, uh, whether they be uh, psychiatrists, policemen, uh, uh, or uh, uh, some other you know, or lawyers or whatever, what you wind up with is uh, the simple fact that uh, uh, that these are all social constructs. They're all things which exist for the purpose of serving the present need, uh, but not necessarily the need of a week from now or a month from now or a year from now. And one thing that comes up for me on this is um, that there, there's a power dynamic in any one of these human systems. Mm -hmm. um, and that is going to uh, contribute to the flaw, if you will. And we spoke for a minute there about um, profit being just one example of mm -hmm. that. Um, but you're bringing up another one, which is very good, which is that most systems, most human systems are authoritarian. They're set up with a, a, uh, an organizational power structure. And uh, the person at the top has the power to fire people below. Mm -hmm. uh, and each person below has, uh, can be assigned certain responsibilities. I remember taking a, a course in graduate school in which uh, uh, the only variable was the organizational structure of an organization of, of any organization? <laughs> and the, uh, uh, the teacher gave an assignment uh, to each of us: come up with a uh, a problem that exists in your organization, and uh, and come to the next session with that problem, and and the structure of your organization. And uh, uh, the first person he took was a a woman who described a personality conflict between two people in the organization. And the, uh, the teacher said, let me see your organizational structure. And he pointed to the two places, the two slots in the organizational structure. And he said, these are the people we were having a personality conflict. And he was right. The very structure of the organization naturally set up those two people to be in conflict with each other. Wow. But when you start looking at the system, you have to look at all the variables in the system. And it's very hard to. But once you get what I call the gestalt, the whole which is more than the sum of its parts, and then you can usually project the rest. You can say, oh, okay, maybe this is where the problem is. Mm. And then you have an opportunity to actually change it. And when I work with individuals and when I work with families and when I work with, uh, with systems, uh, uh, whether it be a, a community, my question is, who's my client? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if the client is a system, and I look at the system in terms of what can be done that hurts the fewest people the least that gets the job done so that the flaws can be corrected. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest that that's a way that we out here in the everyday world also try to, to, to go about our, our interaction with these systems? I mean, you know, the question is how do we survive? Uh, when I think the, uh, yeah, I think the starting point is to uh, to recognize that what you see as the problem may not be the problem. Mm. Uh, and in fact, I tend to approach things from the perspective of uh, doing my best to understand 
you know, what the whole picture is. Mm. I say, if I say to my clients, if I'm good at anything, it's give me 25 or 30 pieces of a hundred piece puzzle. And I can usually paint in the rest, but I can always be wrong. And when I see another piece, it may be that it needs to be changed. Uh, the bottom line on it, from my point of view, though, is uh, take into account and figure out what are the important variables here. What are the ones that are really influencing what goes on? Uh, and many studies have shown that uh, often uh, we get hung up on a specific detail and that becomes more the focus when it's not the real problem. I think about the, uh, the scene in Catch-22, uh, Joseph Heller's seminal book in which uh, uh, it's the help the bombardier scene and Yosarian is doing his best to uh, uh, to deal with the bombardier who has a broken leg and, and he's trying to heal the leg and uh, and finally after taking care of the leg and and the guy is still complaining uh, Yosarian realizes that the guy's been gut shot uh, the uh, the focus on a particular thing uh, uh, can always create a, a butterfly effect. Mm. The effect of one, one little thing affecting all kinds of other bigger things later on that you didn't anticipate. Mm. Wonderful. Our topic again today with uh, Dr. Neil Miranello is all human systems are flawed. Uh, we're continuing our podcast series examining his tweets. You can follow the good doctor online at, on Twitter at Coach Dr. Neil. Neil, your final thoughts on uh, this theory and uh, nihilism, as I like to uh, refer to it, is that all human systems are flawed. How do we go forward to, you know, manifest what we want in our lives uh, when we have to recognize that the social constructs, as well as the physical realities uh, uh, that we live in, uh, are not perfect? Yeah, I, I think the starting point is to take a look at your perspective on a system and see whether it's a perspective which opens up options or closes options. Uh, authoritarian systems tend to close options, tend mm -hmm. to say, do what you're told or else. Uh, uh, other kinds of systems, I think the opposite of an authoritarian system would be like a libertarian system, which has uh, uh, huge problems too, because a world without, uh, without rules doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, when you have uh, if I can, I consider mental health to be directly proportional to the number of options you have. And so if you approach a particular problem from the perspective of uh, what are the possible solutions to this problem, and I want to be open to all of them, rather than to, you know, close uh, my mind to such a degree that I only see one possibility, mm. uh, then uh, you're less likely to uh, push down the wrong domino. And I also think if, you know, maybe this is just me, but maybe through our, our work, I think the human mind likes rules and sort of wants rules. Um, and, I, and I can see that in my own everyday life, you know, as we talk about ADLs and, and that, you know, I, I need to have more structure uh, so that my life can actually function more efficiently and be perhaps more fulfilling. Um, if we didn't have these social constructs uh, flawed as they are, um, I think we would probably live in a much different reality that might be even more fearful uh, than what we live in today. Well, going back to uh, uh, something we talked about before, uh, again, my reductionistic philosophy uh, brings everything down to cocktail and attitude. Mm. And the cocktail is, in fact, the rules that you follow on a daily basis. And, uh, and I follow my rules very religiously, uh, uh, except when it doesn't work. Mm. You know, today it didn't work. You know, I uh, uh, normally meditate uh, three to four hours a day. Uh, I got a call from my son uh, in the middle of my meditation today and I had to interrupt it in order to, uh, uh, to talk to him. Uh, and I had some fairly heavy uh, meetings today. Uh, at the same time, Maybe the, uh, uh, the cocktail that I've done every other day uh, helps me to get through today so far. Uh, the attitude is really the assumption that there is nothing perfect, but there is a right way to deal with this situation right now. And if I can tap into that, what comes out of my mouth will be the right thing. Mm. 
cocktail and attitude. That's going to be a topic of uh, another one of our uh, uh, podcast uh, episodes for sure. Uh, Dr. Neil Marinello, he's in uh, Woodstock, Vermont. He is a solutions focused life coach as well as a behavior expert with near six decades studying the human condition. On behalf of the good doctor, I'm Matt Kelly. We're both wishing you good mental health.